Okay, good evening everyone. We have Richard Cleveland here and I'm Eileen Smith and we're podcasters or internet broadcasters as you'll hear later <laughs> and uh, we're here we want to talk about podcasting, podcast promotion and uh, let's start things off. Richard, tell us a little bit about your podcast. Well, thanks for the invite, Eileen. Uh, well, my name is Richard Cleveland. I'm the owner and host, well, I'm the owner of Naked Ape Productions here in Canada, and I'm the host of two podcasts currently, Podcast You, which is a show about the art of podcasting, and Between the Pages, which is a comic book and geek culture report that I do every week. Okay, great. Well, let's first start off by talking about equipment because I noticed something. You have a very snazzy mic there. I do. What kind of, what kind of mic are you using? <laughs> I am actually using a very inexpensive mic. The mic that I use is the Audio-Technica AT2005 USB microphone. Okay. I have a Samsung CU3. I believe right. it is. That's also a USB. And I have to tell you, taking the advice of a few other podcasters who have reviewed that audio technica like Mike Phillips, I think right. he's the first one who mentioned it to me. And then, you know, Dave Jackson's talked about it and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dane J. Lewis did the unboxing of it. So anyway, I bought the mic. And when I tried to podcast with it, the volume just wasn't loud enough for me and I don't know if I was doing something wrong but I did a couple comparisons with the Samsung and that one I also used it on a different computer to see if that was a problem but I couldn't boost the volume and it could be just that my software that I'm using I actually use uh, something called Screencast-O-Matic okay. Pro, I'm not on a Mac I'm on a PC, so I started with Screencast-O-Matic, and I've enjoyed the platform so much that I've stuck with it. I never upgraded to Camtasia like most folks who are on the PC are using. So anyway, I don't know if that is the problem or what, but I just couldn't get the volume. The sound quality was okay, but it wasn't loud enough for me, so I just, I'm sticking with my Samsung. Until I, and I actually have that brand new Audio Technica sitting in the box, <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, maybe one day I'll use it if I ever get a mixer. And I don't know if it's just that I need to go ahead and go for the mixer. Well, I've tested the microphone in, in different applications from laptops to desktops, uh, through mixers, without mixers, you know, the whole, the whole gambit. And I got to say, from mics that I've used in, in previous, I was in broadcasting for many years. Mm -hmm. So I was used to using the, the, you know, traditional microphone that you see in many radio stations, which is the SM7 uh, by Shure, which is roughly around a $300 to $400 microphone. Okay. The Audio-Technica microphone, based on Mike Phillips' recommendation, I know Mike very well. We're actually quite good friends. Um, he said to try this mic. I went out, I bought it, I brought it home, plugged it directly into my mixing board, and thought that the sound was so much better than the mic I had been using, which was a Behringer microphone, a C3, if I remember right. And that's a condenser microphone, not a dynamic like the one I'm using and like the one that you're using. Um, and I found that this gave me a lot better sound. It gave my voice a, a richer tone. Uh, it didn't pick up a lot of room noise. Although, you know, I, I'm kind of a geek when it comes to this stuff, so I've got a lot of audio processing equipment in between this and what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's me. I'll give it another try. That's why I haven't gotten rid of the mic. I haven't tried to sell it or anything. Well, but you call I, me when you want to test it out, and I'll help you out. Okay, because I think I'm just kind of used to this Samsung, and I haven't had anybody tell me, God, your audio sucks. Or maybe they're just scared to tell me. I don't know. <laughs> I think your audio sounds just fine. Oh, well, then I am I feel good. <laughs> and actually, if it wasn't for Mike, you know, I have to give him another shout out. If it wasn't for Mike, I would not know what I was doing. He's the one who told me how to use the mic, how to talk into it, how the, what the different settings on the mic were. And he, he and I got on Skype one night. It was the first time 
you know, he had ever talked to me. He saw me say something on Twitter. And ever since then, I've just been a huge fan of, of Mike. So Mike and, Phillips know. is a man with more knowledge than I think 90% of the people on the internet. Okay. And, you know, when he talks, I mean, his voice is just like silk. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, it, Even so my anyway. wife likes his voice. <laughs> okay, great. So, anyway, let's talk a little bit more about your shows. You have a whole network of shows? I am, I am building a network. Uh, I like to refer to myself as a grassroots company here in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, in Canada, we don't really have a network of podcasters. Everybody's kind of on their own. And I decided, well, okay, why not build a group of shows, you know, much in the same uh, idea as the Twit Network did. And Daniel J. Lewis, he's got many shows. And uh, my good friend Andrew Zarian from the GFQ Network. You know, they've all built these, these small little businesses based on shows that they produce on the Internet. And I figured, well, I've got a, br a broadcasting background, so why not? Why can't I do that too? And do it from a Canadian perspective. So Okay. All right. So are most of your podcasts audio, video? Because you, you mentioned Andrew. So I just want to make sure you're, you're doing audio. I actually audio do right? all of my shows video. Oh, uh, I do strip video. out the audio. Okay. Uh, but I do them all video. Um, so you get to see my, you know, not so handsome face. <laughs> I, I always said I had one of those faces for radio. <laughs> okay, so, so name your shows one more time, just so okay. I got that. Uh, we have Podcast You, which is every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we have Between the Pages every Saturday, and that's at 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 a.m. Pacific time. And starting on Tuesday night, we will be having a brand new show called Popcorn Lobby, which will be uh, premiering at 9.30 Eastern and I want to say 6.30 uh, Pacific time. I have to get all these times. I'm in the mountain time zone, so I have to do the calculation for both, okay. both time zones. So I'm assuming that the popcorn one has something to do with the movies. It is. Um, <laughs> it is not going to be your typical thumbs up, thumbs down kind of review show. Mm -hmm. uh, my co-host from Between the Pages and I sat down and decided that we wanted to do a show about movies, but we wanted to do it just like we'd come out of the movie for see from seeing it for the first time and how you would have that discussion or that dialogue back and forth about what you liked, what you didn't like, what you thought was cool, and maybe, you know, the guy behind you who is texting on his cell phone all through the movie. <laughs> well, you know what's funny, and I guess it's because I'm such a geek. I don't watch movies, <laughs> so I probably won't spend too much time on that particular podcast. But your podcast, your podcast, you, okay, I'm there, as you know. Um, well, just for anybody who's watching this or if they ever see it, we are both members of some podcasting communities over on Google Plus, and the one that we've uh, been chatting the most on is the podcast technology and, uh, I'm sorry, podcast resource and technology. I believe that's the full name of it. Anyway, it's a great community, so if you are a podcaster, you know, just request uh, to join and we'll get you set up. But uh, I was waiting for the video to get posted and I'll tell you why. I have a Samsung Smart TV, which has oh. radically changed my life. So <laughs> now I get to sit in front of my PC, uh, well, actually, it's my laptop monitor half the time, and then I can swing around <laughs> and, and watch my beautiful Samsung TV. And the Smart TV has a YouTube app. So it's enabled me to do a little bit more multitasking because now I can watch my YouTube vids while I'm doing stuff on the computer and I don't have to go back and pause it. I can just lift up the remote and you know, I got it down packed now. I know where all the buttons are on the remote. You know, I can do it without looking. <laughs> so that's why you asked me the question, am I going to put it on YouTube? That's why I asked where you putting it up on YouTube because now gotcha. I'm finding it so much easier for me to watch my YouTube vids and just 
for everybody to know, most of the YouTube vids I watch are all geeky. You know, they're all tutorials. That's that's how I learn. I'm an, a visual learner. I love to learn stuff on, you know, watching it. I do love audio podcasts as well, but I'd much rather write than read. So when I'm usually on the computer, I'm usually writing something. And so this gives me a chance to listen to podcasts and do some writing at the same time, which is mostly tweeting and Facebooking and Google Plus <laughs> communitying, if that's a new word that I just made up. <laughs> that's okay. It works so, for me. Yeah. So so it's cool because uh, now everybody is doing these Google Hangouts on air, and it's not like you have to have your undivided attention on them. <laughs> that's true. So it's perfect for um, for YouTube and, and, and watching it on the TV. So just another pointer for anybody who is doing YouTube. What I've noticed is, and I've, we've always talked about branding and we've always talked about the importance of branding because a lot of people are going to be consuming your content on these smart TVs. It's real important that you state your name, your, the name of your show, your blog, or your website, whatever. And if possible, to have some other type of branding, like your logo appear. Like right now, we're doing the lower thirds, and, and Richard has his wonderful Naked 8 Productions logo there. <laughs> I, I actually found our... our uh, we've been doing some moving around here in the studio, and I found, uh, amongst the stuff, our official mascot of Naked 8 Productions. Okay. I don't know how long well you can see him there. <laughs> and uh, we, so we actually have an ape in the studio. All right. So it, it's real important because I'm sitting there sometimes I just put on my subscriptions. I, I subscribe to a ton of YouTube channels. I can't even tell you how many. Because a lot of times if people subscribe to me, I'll look and if I see that they've got at least two or three videos that are interesting to me, I'll go ahead and subscribe back. So I may have 200 subscriptions if not more and so when you're watching subscriptions on this YouTube app on the smart TV you're just scrolling through video after video there's there's nothing that tells you this is the name of this video well actually it does tell you when you click on it but it doesn't tell you who it's by you don't see the channel name of course you can't leave comments or any of that stuff all you really see is the video and that thumbnail is what you use to pick which video you're actually going to watch so I just wanted to stress that in case anybody's watching make sure you get your thumbnails uploaded if you don't have access to those thumbnails go ahead and monetize your YouTube channel so you can get access to the custom thumbnail super super important but anyway now we're really talking about podcasting tonight <laughs> but I had to throw that in it's actually, it's just asking me to update some information on my YouTube channel right now. <laughs> what is it asking? Oh, it's, it's just asking me how I want my names and stuff to appear. Okay. When I well, upload things. A lot of people have, in fact, I struggled with that decision at first. Did I want my name, which is going to be your Google Plus profile name, right. to appear on your YouTube channel? So just let me go over that for somebody who may not know. What happens is the URL of your YouTube channel does not change. For example, mine is Miss Eileen Speaks. So my username is still Miss Eileen Speaks. But I decided to go ahead and opt in and let them use my Google Plus profile as my channel name. That's what shows up when people see my profile when they're on YouTube. Okay, but it doesn't affect the URL, so you don't have to worry about redirecting links or any of that stuff. The other advantage of doing that is you also can have your associated website. It just helps with your SEO of your YouTube channel and all of that stuff. And to have that connection with Google Plus is, is always a bonus. Now, a lot of people, like Richard, you may say you don't want to do that because you have the NECA 8 Productions, and that may be an important part of your branding. 
There's yes. also the option that you can have more than one YouTube channel too. I mean, <laughs> you know, so you have to weigh your options. But for me, because my channel name was already Miss Eileen Speaks, so I already had the right. Eileen in there. So the Eileen Smith wasn't too far fetched for me. But you may want your to let your subscribers know because like I just mentioned about how I have so many subscriptions. They're listed alphabetically when you go to your subscribers page. So if people were looking for your channel like they would have been looking for my channel under M for Miss Eileen Speaks. Now it's under I for Eileen Smith. Ah, so gotcha. If they're looking for it that way, more than likely they're probably not. I encourage people to subscribe by email if possible. That way they just get the email. They don't even care or know what your channel name is. <laughs> I agree with you. I, I mean, we... Uh... For myself, I my channel name is Naked Ape Productions. Um, so, and that's I mean, as far as far as the branding goes, that's the way that that I wanted to keep it, um, because Naked Ape is really the umbrella of all of the shows that we do. You know, much like Twit is the umbrella for all the shows that they do with i five and and uh, this week in in tablets or whatever they call it. Um, but yeah, it, that was the whole idea is that we wanted to have a general corporation branding. And I say we, because I bounce a lot of things off of my co-host on the, on the Saturday show, because he's been with me since day one oh, and helped wow. me design a lot of what, what goes on here. Okay. Um, but that being said, I, you know, I really think that it's important to get your branding out there with Miss Eileen Speaks. I think that's a, I mean, it's easy to catch. People will, will automatically uh, come to it once they know how to find you. And it'll be, man, you got to watch that. Miss Eileen speaks. <laughs> she speaks well. Oh, that's so nice of you. So anyway, the other thing is be patient because Google, you know, how they're always changing things. They may give us the ability in the next couple of months, because it's been forthcoming for months now, to connect our Google Plus page to our YouTube channel. We don't have that ability right now as of January the 18th, 2013, but eventually, and the thing is, if you want to go ahead and connect your profile and change the name, that's fine because you can change it again whenever they decide to let us hook up the, the pages. And so it, it's, uh, it's fun times with YouTube and Branding and all that stuff is real important. So you guys think about what you want to do before you make a change. I agree with you 100% on that. I think people really, and this is part of what we talk about on Podcast You, is designing that show from front to back before you even go out and buy any silly equipment that you know we tend to use. Uh, on the first episode, I showed a, an old headset. Let me see if I can find it here. <laughs> I have so many keyboards on my desk, it's crazy. So, you know, we used, uh, originally I used this headset when I did early podcasts or I was experimenting with podcasts. And this is just a Microsoft uh, Life Chat uh, setup, which uh, plugs in via USB. It has a microphone, a, a decent set of headphones. And the only thing you can't do with it, of course, is hear yourself back. Uh, and I prefer to monitor myself. That way I know exactly how I sound uh, to anybody on the other end. But for a small investment, I think this cost me like 45 or $50 for that headset. Um, it gave me two things. It gave me headphones and it gave me a microphone. Uh -huh. And I could record into Audacity or I could record into Cam Twist or ManyCam or any of those other free programs that are out there. Um, but as we got more sophisticated, we went to a mixing desk. I have a 16-channel mixing desk here on the table. Uh, I'm running one, two, three, four, five, six computers in the studio. <laughs> Are they uh, Macs or PCs? Uh, they're all PCs. Oh, cool. I have a, I have a background in IT as well, so uh, I'm a PC guy, and oh. I build all – everything in here has been custom-built except for the laptops. Um, oh, but see. with that being said, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that you can get into as you progress in this hobby. It's much, I equate this much to the ham radio guys. Mm -hmm. They go out, they buy the first little, 
you know, ham radio and they buy their first little microphone. And before long, it just seems to have grown to this massive little stacks of equipment all over the place. And that's kind of what podcasting is like. But if you jump in with your eyes closed, you can spend a lot of money and waste a lot of money uh, in this, this hobby if you pod fade very quickly because people can get bored because they don't understand what they're doing a lot of times. Yeah. And, and with that, I want to segue into something that you and I decided we were going to talk about, and that is the name podcasting. And just to give a little bit of background, I think that a lot of the, um, the podcasters who podcast about podcasting, which are the ones that I always listen to, like, as I mentioned before, Daniel J. Lewis, Dave Jackson, mm -hmm. Cliff Ravenscraft, Ray Ortega, you know, they, well, especially Cliff Ravenscraft, is really stuck on using the word podcasting. And that came up when um, Leo Laporte gave his uh, opening speech at mm -hmm. the New Media Expo, which used to be Blog World, but it's New Media Expo now. And Leo has decided that, you know, even though he thinks the word podcasting may be a little belittling, he also said the same thing about blogging, that the terms may be a little belittling. He still is going to use the word podcasting. He said he's a podcaster, and I know Cliff was just ecstatic that he would say that. Personally, I just think it's easier. I if you look at my tagline on Google+, Plus, I say blogger, podcaster, social media ninja. <laughs> I have seen and, that. And I just do that because to me it's easier. I know what podcasting is and I realize that a lot of people don't know what podcasting is. But I think that uh, using other terms like internet broadcasting may be a little confusing to people who don't know the difference. For us geeks, us techie, techie people, and us podcasters, most of us, not all, but most of us will know the difference. I, before I um, let you talk about internet broadcaster, sure. I, I was so surprised at some of the statistics that Todd Cochran gave from the podcasting awards and all of the people that submitted their shows or had their friends submit their shows for podcast awards that didn't really have a podcast. And I guess it just, you know, is amazing to me that people think that they're podcasting, but because podcasting has a technical definition, you know, of, of the RSS feed and, and all of that, that they don't realize that they are not really podcasting they may have recorded a show or, or recorded some type of audio or video and they're posting it somewhere but there's no RSS feed available or it can't be found on their site. <laughs> right. So anyway, I'm going on and on. I'm going to turn it over to Richard and he's going to talk about internet broadcasting and why he likes that term. Well, I like the term because, I mean, I come from a broadcasting background. To me, podcasting really doesn't fit the model of what we do anymore. I mean, I understood that when it was in its infancy, but we've, we've so gone beyond that now. I think podcasting, and people embrace that word. I think that's great for myself. I love the word internet broadcaster because I think that's what I do. I put out a show, a couple of shows every week that are streamed live, so they're a broadcast. They're done over the internet. And then you can pick up the rerun or, you know, the on-demand later. The word I actually really prefer is something that Leo said a few years back. And he said that we're not really podcasters anymore and internet broadcasting is a little too broad a term. We fit right into that micro-broadcaster. Mm. So, yeah. and I, you know, as I examine that word, I think that, we are just that because we are producing a, a, a program each and every week or bi-weekly or once a month, but we are still producing a serialized program that you can get on demand. Mm -hmm. And we're doing okay. it with web cameras. We're doing it with $40 microphones. And we're doing it with our $35 or $40 internet connections. Right, right. You know, so we have all the tools at our fingertips 
to get the word out there about anything that we want to talk about, whether it be, and I talked about this on Tuesday, whether it could, or when, pardon me, Wednesday, it could be you want to talk about Lego, you can talk about knitting, you can talk about baking pies. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's a topic that somebody is going to want to hear about. And that's why I think we fit much better into the micro broadcasting than I, uh, than I really do either internet broadcaster or podcaster. And a podcaster, I understand where that came from because of the RSS feed. But I think micro broadcasting is a much more accurate description of what we do as a collective now. Okay. Well, I, I think that um, you have some excellent points there. I just... You know, I just don't want people to get confused. That's that's all I can say. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if having the different uh, terminology confuses people or not. I know I saw an article, um, Marcus Sheridan, if you're familiar with him, he's known as the sales lion. He has I a am. blog, and on his blog, there was a post a couple weeks ago, I think it may have been right around the new year, about someone who had written an article, and I cannot recall this gentleman's name. He wrote this article and it appeared on Forbes. And it was about the term journalist and how he did not like that uh, blogger outreach was reaching out to journalists because, in my opinion, from reading the post, and I was not familiar with this person before. I guess a lot of other journalists are familiar with him, but I'm a blogger. And um, he thought that blogger outreach was like talking down to him because he's a journalist and I've, apparently he's been around for 20-some years. And then later on I found out that he uh, wrote a book with, uh, I believe it was Chris Brogan, and it was about blogger outreach. <laughs> and I thought, okay, this guy's got my head spinning. <laughs> Does he just want to use the word blogger when it's convenient for him when he's trying to sell a book? Or is, I, I don't know the whole backstory, but I just think that I kind of took a little offense to that because I felt like, well, I understand that maybe some journalists, especially if you've been around for a while, you used to be in print and now you've had to move over to you know the internet and the digital world and maybe you're a little on the defense because you feel like you're a true journalist before um, this whole blogosphere thing took over but it's like you know if I've got something that's important for people that they want to hear and I'm I'm writing let's call ourselves writers and because maybe you know you've had this career that's been 20 years going on for 20 years then that's good for you but I just I took offense to it because I am a blogger now let me ask you Eileen when you are writing a blog do you do research on that blog on the material that you're covering do you do some sort of research absolutely yeah I I'm I'm constantly well I, I, I'll be honest with you what the way I do things is I curate content and I use this tool called Scoop It. You've, if you've heard my podcast, you've probably heard me talking about Scoop It. I, have. I love it. And so when time comes for me to do a blog post, I basically already have all the information because I've been curating it for over a year mm -hmm. <laughs> with Scoop It. So I can go to one of my Scoop It topics or I can go to someone else who I'm following on Scoop It because I know there are certain users that I, I really trust just about anything that they curate and um, I can find my information that way but yeah I do I'm constantly researching like I said when we were talking about the smart TV I'm on here I'm, when I'm on Twitter I'm not just broadcasting I'm also curating and, and same way when I'm on Facebook and, and when I'm on Scoop It I'm curating and I'm you know gathering information that will eventually become a podcast or a blog post or a YouTube video or a slide share presentation, you so name it. Would that not make you, by definition, a journalist? I honestly, I this is why I don't get the the confusion about the semantics of somebody thinking that because they're a journalist that they are on this level here and bloggers are on this level here. I don't get it. I, I 
it's over my head, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, if you aggregate information, you look at the facts before you report on it, that makes you, by definition, a journalist. Anybody who wants to say, well, I'm a journalist and you're a blogger, in my opinion, they don't understand the medium yet. And that's been a lot of the problem with people coming from traditional forms of media like newspapers and, and television and radio, like I came from radio. I didn't understand podcasting. I didn't understand blogging. I still am not a great blogger uh, <laughs> because I hate the type. I'd rather talk than type. But at the same token, that makes you, by definition, a journalist. So you're right in there. So if anybody's talking down to you, don't take that nonsense. Yeah, you're a journalist I, I, as much as they are because you do the same research they do. I I, I agree. Thank you so much. <laughs> and you know, I by the same token, I guess I kind of translate that over into the whole concept of podcasting and what should we call ourselves. I just <clears throat> I I started watching podcasts without any knowledge of the definition of what a podcast was or whatever. I just downloaded iTunes to store my music. Then I started going over to the iTunes store. As you know, I'm on PC. I don't have a smartphone, never did. So I'm doing all this on either my desktop back in the day or now my laptop. Eileen, and I'm right there with you. I still rock an old flip phone. <laughs> okay. And I eventually... You know, I, I ran across, I started, I was doing yoga back then. Uh, I used to have an old, old version of Photoshop. So I used to watch the Photoshop Guys podcast. I'm a big Microsoft Excel user. So I watch Mr. Excel and I still watch him to this day. And like I said, yoga, amazing, you know, and that was podcasting to me, all, all video and I was downloading my podcast. And for, in fact, one of my very first videos is called Ode to My Podcast, where I made this silly little, <laughs> silly little poem up about podcasting, about the podcast that I followed right. at the time. And so I didn't even realize that audio podcasting was a thing back then. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like just about educating our listeners so that they know that oh I can get that show on iTunes I can also get subscribed to it on Stitcher and I should tell my friends because they don't you know they don't use iTunes or they don't have an iPhone so they need to know that they can get the show on Stitcher or you know wherever BlackBerry or or, or whatever and mm -hmm. I just think it's about educating people so that they know what a podcast is and where to find it whatever terminology that we want to use to call ourselves I think it's fine I think that you know if I see that you're an internet broadcaster in my mind I'll translate that into podcaster and I'll put you that's, in my that's perfectly fine circle. with me <laughs> I have a podcaster circle on Google Plus I don't have an internet broadcaster circle but <laughs> I have I, a podcasting I, circle too so it's okay <laughs> but if I make one up I'll be sure that you are the first one I put in there now we have Aaron McKay who's joined us. Yeah, Aaron. Hey, how you doing? All right. Are you going to get on camera? Girlfriend, you know, I'm in my pajamas. And it Are you having a least, bad hair day? <laughs> well, every day if I take at least an hour to get ready to get on camera. So I thought I'd put my little, a little drawing of mine here, my little dress. Oh, know. beautiful. Oh, that's your own art. Yes, I do watercolor when I'm not working. I paint because it oh, makes me right. joyful. <laughs> now, have you started a podcast yet, Aaron? I did start one. Uh, I only did three episodes because mm -hmm. I have this thing about having to be in an elevated state of joy to podcast. <laughs> so I'm waiting to get there and I'm like, oh, I'm not yet, you know, where there's no stress on me and I'm totally happy so I can transmit everything good to the people that are listening to me. So I got really busy at the end of the year and stopped, but I'm going to get right back at it. I have three outlines that I haven't done yet. So well, you sound right like you're in a good mood tonight. So go ahead and record <laughs> your podcast or next episode <laughs> as soon as you get off of here with us. Oh, that's because I, I ate diet chocolate, and chocolate always makes you joyful. 
See, there's the secret. You, you write is. the stuff down prior to the date that you're going to do the show. Then you eat some chocolate, and then exactly. you do the show. Exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. Well, the next thing that we wanted to move into, Aaron, uh, Richard and I already talked about it before the show, is promotion. Mm -hmm. And I know that you are a diva when it comes to promotion, so it doesn't oh, matter if we're you. talking about blogging or. <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about your promote. What do you do, Aaron, to promote? Like when you do a blog post or or whatever, what's your? Um, do you have like a checklist or steps that you go through for a promotion? Well, I think that nowadays when we start when we when we create any kind of you know content you have to think about uh, Pinterest for example so mm -hmm. I always think about choosing a really good image before I even do anything because if you start at the beginning where you have a great image and fabulous content when somebody goes there they can pin that image it can go viral so image marketing is really the new thing and I, I recommend finding a fabulous image not just an okay image something that will get traction on Pinterest and Facebook because and, and Google Plus so yeah that's the first thing I do is really work on finding a fabulous image where do you get your images well uh, sometimes I create my own art uh, painting it with watercolor that's cool and yeah and then I like I will sc I'll scan it and then it won't look so good as what it is live when I scan it and so I'm like oh my goodness so I kind of you know it's kind of a hit and miss in that way but the other thing I do is I will go into I found a really cheap stock photo site called site called 123RF and it's the cheapest stock photo site that I found and I'll buy stuff there and the other thing is I'll also look for free for commercial use images um, I have a list of them that I wrote on my blog for anybody that's trying to find free for commercial use images and but the thing about free for commercial use images is that many times they're not the high quality that you want. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes you just have to spend that dollar and buy one image, which is what I spend on 123RF. Well, actually, what I do is I use iStock. And mainly because I've always used it at work and uh, I've always thought that their images were quality. So if I'm not using iStock, um, Sometimes, you know, I have a lot of guest posters or a lot of guest authors on my blog. And so sometimes they supply the images and I don't mind giving out the credit for wherever they're getting the image from. But I will say in general, I think podcasters suck at um, preparing images for, <laughs> for their well, show notes. Oh, now, here we go. Show notes. That's a word I never like using, Richard, by the way. <laughs> I don't like that word either. Again, <laughs> okay. I'm right. but, I, but I use it because that's what everybody calls it and everybody knows what, what it is. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can also like I create an image and keep it right at the top. So because of the search engines, I don't use the image, you know, because search engines don't want an image to be the first thing, the like, first thing. correct. So I have both the image and text right at the beginning. So it doesn't like, overcome the entire first uh, portion of the page mm -hmm. and then I'll put the podcast and then I'll do a summary and a show notes and, and and usually I have like works because mine is more about personal development I have I create a PDF and have them go through questions so that they can go inside themselves with these questions and so that's what I do for my show notes most of the time Okay. So Richard, let's turn it over to you. What are you doing for promotion? Are you using social wow. media? Uh, as as often as I am not lazy to do so, yes, I am. <laughs> Besides uh, Google Plus, where are you? Well, typically I use Facebook. Um, I, I've still not quite got into the rhythm of Twitter. And maybe it's just because they don't allow me to have enough characters to write everything I want to write. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I typically use Facebook, and I send that out to you know anybody that's on our Naked Ape Facebook uh, fan page. Um, you know, it'll go out to all of those folks, and we're doing quite well actually. We we went up from a 
handful of people when we started back in March of last year. Now we're up to, uh, I think, 175 was the last counter, 177. But that being said, the promotion that we've done outside the studio and outside the Internet, locally in our own community and, and in the province of Alberta, um, we've been able to go from just a you know a couple hundred viewers a month when we first started to our numbers in December of uh, 2012 were 37,000 views for the month of December. And awesome. that's not hits, that's views. Awesome. That's really fantastic. For well, two old guys talking about comic books. <laughs> okay. Well, for me, I am... You know, like we were talking earlier about my tagline being blogger, podcaster, social media ninja. And so I am a big social media person. And the reason why I use that term, social media ninja, because we're always talking about semantics, right? That's been a running theme tonight. I hate when people call themselves gurus or even when other people <laughs> call gurus. So I just use the word ninja because I think it's fun. And it's kind of like whimsical, you know, it's just, <laughs> and I think when I think of ninjas, I think of somebody who's moving around in the night and most of the time I'm up at 2 or 3 a.m. Like tonight is totally not my typical schedule. I'm usually <laughs> in bed by 7 <laughs> and I'm up at 2 or 3 a.m. tweeting, Facebooking, Google Plusing, the whole bit. So that's where the whole concept of the ninja thing came in at. So I've done a great job with blogging. I think it's easier for me so far. It's much easier to promote because uh, most bloggers, and because I have a blog about blogging, which is basic blog tips, by the way, anybody didn't know that, because I have a blog about blogging, everybody knows about social media and everybody knows that they should be sharing stuff and if they see something that, you know, is interesting or that is valuable content, you know, a lot of people have me on Twitter feed and all of that. So the Twitter is already taken care of. Facebook was a little bit slower going for me and when I finally got up and ramped up on Facebook, now I'm just bored with Facebook almost. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's not that I don't like it. I still like it, but I just don't like what they did as far as making it harder for us to be visible in the news feed and all that stuff. And you got to pay for promotions. You know, like now I'm up to about 3,500 uh, likes on my Facebook page. But it, yeah, I paid for some of them. I right. did, you know, and... For me, I think that Google Plus is just scratching the tip of the iceberg and eventually I'm going to be moving most of that activity and that time that I spend on Facebook now over to Google Plus. In fact, that's what I would like to do. But I do have some groups over on Facebook that are going to be really, really hard to make that move because I know a lot of those people that are in those groups that network with me that are part of my community do not want to move over to Google Plus, but I'm going well, to encourage them. <laughs> I think Google Plus, uh, as a model of of what Facebook may have started in the social networking sphere, is really making leaps and bounds. I mean, when they introduced Google Plus, it now gave us an ear on a second tier of social media. We now have the ability to go out live and do shows like we're doing tonight. Uh, we can talk about it on Google Plus. We can actually tie that Google Plus back to our Facebook page. Sure can. Or, or tie it to our Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. And it'll go out to all these social media networks and be seen by all those people. Now, admittedly, I didn't I didn't go the route that you did. I didn't I didn't go and purchase uh, likes on my Facebook page. And I think the reason for that was because I wanted to see exactly how many honest fans that we had. And by doing that, it gave me a better measuring stick, as it were, to see what kind of fan base we could build up for a show like this. So that could translate later on down the line into advertising dollars for us as we grow the company. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me just clarify something about what I said about Facebook and promotions. When I've done promotions on Facebook, they have been 
to drive traffic to a specific blog post or to my YouTube channel or to my podcast. Mm -hmm. The likes just came with, you know, part and parcel. I never okay. really wanted to go after, you know, like my page. No, it's like go to this blog post. So I use, use the feature that's called promoted posts. So right. I post something that I've just shared, you know, I just uploaded a video because a lot of times I upload videos. I have like about 130 videos on YouTube. Wow. And it'll take me weeks before I write the blog post. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes I never write the blog post. Some some of the videos are exclusive for my email list subscribers. So I, I just have them there for them. You know, like I've got one there that introduces them to the concept of using Google+. Plus. And, and one of the things that I tell people is even if you're not ready to venture into Google+, Plus, go there and fill out your profile. Put a nice forward-facing profile pic so that you know you can get your Google authorship because Google wants that headshot they don't want you to have on sunglasses they don't want you turned to the side and any of that wearing stuff. a ball cap in my, in my case <laughs> I think that they're using some kind of recognition you know of course they can't view all everybody's Google Plus profile one by one so anyway and tell people make one post on Google Plus that says Hey, I'm new here, but I normally hang out on Twitter or you can find me on Facebook. So even if you never use Google Plus, fill all that stuff out, add all your links, make sure that anywhere you've ever guest posted or if you have an about me page, whatever, YouTube, but make sure all of that is filled in on your profile and then just, like I said, put that one post on there that tells people, this is where you can find me at. And if they don't do anything else, there's, you know, some credit in doing that. Yeah, I agree, Eileen. Um, one of the things that I always tell my clients is, look, we need to set up your authorship because Google search will actually pull in your picture if you have a few attribute yourself to your blog. Mm -hmm. So there's a code that you put on the sidebar of your website and you uh, go in and do that on your profile and that will give that will tell Google that you are the actual author of your blog which makes them know give it more authority to the original source of the content so this is one of the ways that they're working on trying to weed out duplicate content people that plagiarize other people's content and attributing the original source of the content this is how they're doing it and I think they're doing a really great job at that it's one of the first things that I did when I set up Google Plus and make sure that your headshot is really good because it's gonna be appearing in the search engines absolutely and the other thing is the more people that you're connected with on Google Plus the more people that have you in their circles the more people are going to see you that little author authorship um, profile image when they search for something that you're writing about and I had the luxury that I was an early adopter of Google Plus so I've got like 10,000 over 10,000 I'm in over 10,000 circles and I thought that was a really big deal until I met Lynette Young <laughs> and Lynette Young she runs uh, a community called the women of Google Plus and she has 1.5 million so <laughs> that kinda shut me up about my little 10,000 <laughs> But, uh, don't don't feel that way because you know the thing is if somebody gets on the Google suggested user list as mm -hmm. somebody that Google will suggest they will get lots and lots of you know hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of followers very quickly yeah and so mm -hmm. that because basically Google is promoting them for free just because they like what they're doing mm -hmm. so that's really cool I mean it's awesome that she got on on that Google suggested user list it's awesome yeah she and I think she's also an early adopter see I was a big fan of Google Buzz so I was really sad to see Google Buzz go away but at the same time things started going downhill because it, it was turning into another Twitter everybody was putting their their Twitter feed and their Facebook feed on Google Buzz so I'm really glad that Google Plus has locked down and they haven't 
allow people to put those feeds on on you know in their on their profile streams and hopefully they will stick with that because I think that just adds so much noise and I think that if people want your Twitter then they need to go to Twitter you know <laughs> you know same way if they want your Facebook I think Google Plus should be more about conversations and just taking things to a deeper level we have more than the 140 characters let's take advantage of it yeah I agree with you a hundred percent on that although you know some of us like myself who are very lazy typists <laughs> have a hard time doing that so what I'm gonna have to do in future Eileen is contact you before I do any new posts and get you to help me with the posts okay sure there you go <laughs> I'll do that. And I'll help you with your audio. Okay, wonderful. Well, guys, it was supposed to be 20 minutes. <laughs> and it's been 45. 45 of good information. Yeah. Right. What else do does anybody want to um, say or, or promote or, or whatever? Aaron, what do you want to... Uh, well, I just wanted to say that I really love Google Plus and... I, you know, in relation to Facebook, for example, I've never been a fan of Facebook because they've always changed things that were going to make them, Facebook owners, more money mm -hmm. and to the detriment of the users. And they've done this over and over again. I'm not even talking about to the detriment of marketers, just users in general. general. And that's why I, I procrastinated years to even do a Facebook page because I was mad at them. And because I could, I was reading all their different things. But Google Plus is so much better for a variety of, of reasons. And one of them is that they have Google Plus managers here. And that mm -hmm. means that people have their, their full time job is to see what's going on in the community, make improvements. And so you can tell there's so much more things that you can do on Google Plus than you can on Facebook. And you don't have to be worried that nobody's going to see what you're doing. Because right. Facebook's going to all of a sudden change without the user wanting that change. And so it's just, I think it's, it's a better mindset behind this social media pr platform than Facebook. Absolutely. So where can people find you at Aaron besides just on Google Plus? I have a website called Embracing Home that's kind of about everything. <laughs> and and there's personal development, there's baby shower stuff, and then I have another website called socialsweetie.com that I started a while ago, but I haven't done a lot with it because I just haven't had time. But that's where I write more things that are about online uh, marketing and online just technical tutorials type thing also. Okay, well, just send me uh, all those links, and then I'll add them in the description for this YouTube video, okay? Okay. All right, and Richard, let's just go over all of your contact stuff. Well, you can contact me either by email at richard at nakedapeprod.com, or you can come find our shows at nakedapeprod.com on the Internet. And the shows that we do are Popcorn Lobby, which is starting this coming Tuesday, uh, we'll be running down the top 25 most anticipated movies of 2013. And then Wednesday is Podcast You, where I talk to folks about the art of podcasting. And every Saturday at noon, Mountain Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. on the uh, Pacific Coast, is Between the Pages. It's a comic book and geek culture report. Okay, great. And I hope you guys all know I'm Eileen at Basic Blog tips.com and you can also find that podcast at MissEileenSpeaks.com. and it's been fun hanging out with you guys it was an impromptu hangout it turned out to be really great that's the beauty of Google Plus because we could definitely not do this on Facebook <laughs> we never would have found each other exactly <laughs> okay you guys thanks so much and I'll talk to you soon thanks Eileen okay bye bye, -bye.